Okay, Grant, you've uh, been around in the music business for a long time in terms of the Canadian music industry. Yeah. Basically since its infancy. Um, what have you done over the last, what, 30 years? Well, uh, well, we were in one of the original Yorkville bands called Stitch and Time. That's when we got started here and uh, went through that whole period, you know, the, the Yorkville scene was a was a good one. A lot of uh, new acts, a lot of uh, foc eyes focused on, on Toronto. In those days, bands like the Poppers and uh, different other groups that had New York record contracts. And, uh, anyway, we were a five-man band, five vocals, and uh, we, we had a couple of, couple of chart hits. And then uh, I got a call from Skip Prokop, uh, who was forming a new band called Lighthouse. So he said he wanted me to play bass in that, which I didn't do, but I said, yeah, sure, well, we'll go for that. And so uh, I was the bass player on uh, three Lighthouse albums, so we got to, we really got to explore things uh, uh, with Lighthouse. You know, we got to do the tail end of the big pop festivals, you know, the 80,000 people pop festivals at the big racetracks, and we played with, uh, and this is not crap, but we did. We played with Zeppelin, we played with Santana, and we played with Creedence, and we played with the band, and on these big shows, you know, I mean, we weren't the only ones. But, uh, uh, all these venues like Atlantic City and uh, Monterey Jazz Festival, Boston Jazz Festival, and big pop festivals. So that was that was a great thing. And then I got stupid and quit. Formed my own bands, a whole succession of my own bands. And the most notable of that, I guess, would be Mad Cats. We had a couple of albums with Mad Cats and a couple of American record deals there. But uh, it just got, uh, after 25 years on the road, just got a little bit too much. And that's when I decided to kind of settle down and uh, open up a bar. <clears throat> and that's where I am now. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the bar. What made you uh, decide to get into a bar of all the possibilities? Well, I don't know. I was just, uh, I moved to this town, I moved to Stouffville, and I've uh, been there 10 years now, and about, I saw this place on the main street, and I, and I knew it, it was closed, but I knew it had a liquor license, so I started to look into it. and. Uh, and got some money together and, and uh, opened it up and it's still in business after six years. So we got, you know, as you know, you've been there many times and we uh, showcase a lot of music there for four nights a week. And uh, we have, uh, I think, pretty pretty darn good jam sessions there with uh, top caliber musicians and, and uh, you know, guys like Danny Marks and Mike McKenna and uh, all kinds of guys from the old school and the new school play there. And they, the, the audience is great there. They give them they play for no money, but they get they get, they get stroked. <laughs> Any uh, really outstanding moments over that career? Oh yeah, well, uh, probably uh, playing Carnegie Hall would be the, the big one. I think that was uh, we we did that twice. But uh, I mean, you play Carnegie Hall, you know, that's practice, practice, practice. Yeah, that's uh, that was a big deal. That was a big deal. But all those pop festivals, uh, Monterey, that was a real eye opener. That was. Uh, you know, I'm in California and uh, the whole the whole California deal. So, lots of excitement there. Different different way of life out there, especially back in those days. Okay. Uh, just a question. I know you've done a lot of time playing in bars over the years. What's it yeah. like to be on the other side of the bar? I think I'd rather be on this side of the bar <laughs> with the guitar. Pack it up. You know, do your gig, get your money, pack it up, and go home. Let the let let the other poor bugger worry about the other stuff that's going on. Because there's lots of stuff behind the scenes that musicians don't see. But I know what they are now, and I kind of wish I didn't a lot of, a lot of the times. Kind of hard yeah, yeah, that's, that's the way it is, though. You know, just explore every little avenue, and some things you like, some things you don't like. Okay, and you want to tell us something about your latest release? Oh, yeah, the Jam Nation thing. Yeah, this is a collective bunch of guys that have been playing with me on and off for uh, three years, probably, maybe more. Some guys have been doing this jam session with me for six years. And uh, what would it, we, it's just one, two, three, four, go. And we, uh, Alec Fraser, the bass player, who's played with, um, you know, Murray McLaughlin and uh, Morgan Davis, Rick Fines and yeah, Danny yeah. Marks and Danny Marks, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he uh, he recorded it live on on ADOT at the club, and it's all songs that we sort of do at the jam sessions, and we recorded it uh, uh, two two separate jam sessions, and what we we picked the best stuff which we thought had the most energy and the most life and most pizzazz and put it on this uh, on this CD. We, this is the second one actually we've done. First one was a studio one, but with the so with the jammers as well. But uh, a lot of good guys, you know, uh, John Penchishan playing sax and 
Doug Pfeiffer and John Bollmeister, Bongo Bob, Ralph, you know, all the, all the boys. Okay. Um, you put on two hats for a second. As a musician and as a bar owner, yeah. uh, what would you suggest to new bands looking to get gigs in the bar? To get work in the bar? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, what I've found, uh, I hate to say this, but bar owners are looking for bands that play, play uh, popular music. And, uh, you know, you, you have to write your own stuff to get ahead. But, you know, it's, it's a shame to say it, but people, don't, they, don't, they don't necessarily want to hear it. You know, they want to hear what they know. And I fought against that for years, but uh, you can only fight so long and have no money in your pocket. So you have to play the game. I guess you have to do your original material and record that on the side and, and, uh, and do your Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff if, at night, you know, and make some money. Okay. It's a shame, but that's the way it is in this province. Look at the bands that are doing anything. They're all cover bands. They're all tribute to this, tribute to that, blah, 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 on and on. Yeah. But you keep doing that stuff, you can't get anywhere. You have to record your own stuff. Okay. So it's a catch-22. Yeah, I want to ask you, um, where do we find Fullerton's in Stovall? Oh, uh, 6211 Main Street. If you can find Stovall, you can find Fullerton's. <laughs> it's right, right at the new uh, train station, right across the street. The, the railway tracks. Once you hit the railway tracks, stop because there might be a train, but then you can just make a right and uh, pull right into the driveway. Okay, 6211 Main Street? 6211 Main Street, Stovall. Good food, good music, good friends. Great food. Yeah, not bad. Music. Yeah, Friends. yeah. The music I pride on, I pride ourselves on that. Yeah. Do you have a phone number for the bar if anybody would like to inquire from out of town? Do what? Do you, if, do you have a phone number for the bar? Oh, a phone number? No, we don't have a phone. No, we just, yeah, we do. It's nine zero five six four two five three six zero. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to phone and find out what's happening, there's always something going on. on Always bands that you wouldn't expect to be there, like Godos played there, or the Good Brothers are coming there, January twenty second. Uh, Desperado, all kinds of bands, and it's a small place, but we sell a hundred tickets and then we lock the doors, that's the way it is. <laughs>